just trying to figure out which kind of CMOS you really want to try first? Or is it that you're just not sure if there's a benefit to Irish CMOS over regular CMOS? And why the heck does Irish CMOS get a really cool name when other CMOS is just kind of like generally mossy? Mm. You know what? I'm gonna call regular CMOS Major General CMOS. Give it a little power and prestige. Yes, yes, I am a Major General! Papa! Not now, darling, I'm on! Let's get into all the differences, right now, on Eccentric Nature. <laughs> what are CMOSes really? So the first question you might have is, how is sea moss different from seaweed? Well, sea mosses are actually a type of seaweed. All sea moss falls under the category of rhodophytes, which is the largest group of algae in the seaweed world. Another interesting distinction is that true land moss, or bryophyta, are not related at all to sea moss. What about kelp? Is kelp different? Kelps are phaophytes, and oddly, they're not related to sea moss either. Which is tough because a lot of people often call kelp seaweed. See why this is all so confusing? Etymology. In other words, what the heck are these two sea mosses called? Now the easiest way to distinguish Irish sea moss from Major General sea moss is the biological names. While there are various subspecies of these, Major General sea moss is better known as genus Grossularia, and Irish sea moss, Chondus crispus. Chondrus crispus is called Irish sea moss because it was the Irish who first took advantage of its amazing properties in the late 1700s. Not only medicinally, but to save lives during the Irish potato famine. According to folklore, Irish sea moss was carried on trips to ensure your safety, placed beneath rugs to increase your luck, and also used to ensure a steady flow of money into your household. Well, I kinda reckon the potato famine destroyed that myth. Part of the reason it doesn't have a cool name is genus Grossularia is much more straightforward. Grossularia is simply a genus of about 190 species of sea moss that was first established by DK Metcalf. Huh? No, wait, he's a wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks. Genus Grossularia was established in 1830 by English botanist Dr. R.K. Greville in the Algae Britannica. Where do they grow? No surprise, really. Irish sea moss can be found in abundance around the coast of Ireland. But you can also find Chonjus crispus around many of the North Atlantic coastlines in cooler water. And the only place it can grow is on rocks. Major General sea moss, on the other hand, sprawls around the globe. Genus Grossularia grows in many different places and climates across the world. It comprises around 80% of the worldwide market. It can be grown not only on rocks, but various cultures like bottom culture, raft, stake rope, and even pond cultures. It even grows in various types of waters. How do they look different? So how can you tell the difference just by looking at the two? The fact is, it ain't always easy, as both species can come in different colors. So you can't really use that as a distinguishing factor. And once it's turned into a powder, whew, forget about it. You'd have to have it analyzed in a lab to really know which species it is for sure. The main distinguishing factor is that Irish sea moss is more of a flat, fan-like shape. Major General Grossularia, on the other hand, tends to look more like strands or thin, stringy noodles in its appearance. Maybe an angel hair pasta? While color is not a definitive way to distinguish the two, Irish sea moss is predominantly darker and tends to be more in the red to purple range of color. Grassalaria, on the other hand, is often pale or straw colored due to the fact that it is often found in areas exposed to much more sunlight like the tropics. Are there different benefits? Irish sea moss is the only one that has carrageenan, an expectorant or demulcent that helps with sore throats, coughs, colds, and various chest problems. Now it's very important to note that natural carrageenan found in Irish sea moss isn't nearly the same thing as the industrial byproduct that is found in processed carrageenan, which isn't nearly as healthy to take. Processed carrageenan is a product that's used as a thickener for various products from pate, toothpaste, and firefighting foam. It's also used to help add clarity to beer, increase the viscosity of sauces, and even enhance diet soda texture. 
The nutrient survivor CMOS are supposedly higher than Dinus grossularia, as some research claims that Chandra's crispus contains as many as 92 different trace minerals. However, this is really where more research is needed, as current research shows that the minerals, amino acids, and other various nutritional levels can vary according to season. But at the end of the day, there aren't many known differences between the two. Both have lots of vitamins and minerals. Both have great amino acids, including omega-3 fatty acids. They're also both loaded with antioxidants and phenolic compounds that are just plain good for you. If you want to know more about it, then watch my video on the benefits of CMOS. Final Thoughts Irish CMOS is rather more expensive than Major General CMOS. And this is partially because its nutritional benefits are considered higher, it's just plain harder to grow and find, and the fact that it's much harder to be farmed or faked. Grossularia, on the other hand, is much more susceptible to the attack of fraudsters. There have been stories of people charging as much as $10 per ounce of General CMOS. Ouch! Somebody call the MOS police! And sadly, even those who aren't fraudsters are often just really bad at labeling what the product is. I just did a quick search, but I found tons of different product labels that had a genus Grossularia listed as Irish sea moss. Wrong! Fix your products, people! Come on! When it comes down to it, both Irish sea moss and Major General sea moss have amazing health benefits. And really, it's a matter of which one you like best and works best with your body. So have you tried CMOS before, or are you going to try it now that you know more about it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to learn more about the benefits of CMOS, then watch this video right here. Or if you want some good herby history, then watch this puppy. Please, be kind. Take care of each other. And if you haven't already, go out there and try some good quality CMOS for yourself.